Hi there, my name is Darius Amiri. I am an immigration lawyer and the chair of the immigration department at Rose Law Group, a law firm based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. And today I am here to talk about the public charge rule in immigration, something that's uh, been receiving a lot of buzz lately and I thought uh, merited further explanation. So the public charge rule was implemented by the Department of Homeland Security uh, as of February 24th, 2020 of this year, and it's affecting applicants for green cards or visas to the United States. Um, however, the public charge rule as a concept is by no means uh, new. In fact, it's been around since uh, the late 1800s. I think it was 1884. It was first established by Congress um, as a means to uh, deny a visa to the United States for someone who was likely to become a public charge uh, or a burden on our government. And the fear is that uh, the, pu the public charge rule was never actually defined what a public charge means. And so the fear now is that uh, the Trump administration will broadly apply the public charge term to um, constrain legal immigration to the United States and result in more uh, denials of green cards and visa applications. So because the public charge rule was never statutorily defined, um, the way it was interpreted by immigration was uh, someone who was primarily uh, dependent on government benefits for subsistence, for getting by, could be denied because they were a public charge uh, um, or an undue burden on the United States taxpayers. Um, that definition is being expanded under the Trump administration, and the new um, application will be someone who is more likely than not to become a public charge. And there is a key distinction there. So it's even if someone is not considered a public charge right now, by looking at a list of factors, which I'll go over, they could determine that in the future they could be a public charge and then use that determination to deny a visa or a green card application. What's well, scary? You know, under this broadened definition, benefits such as social security income, welfare, uh, temporary assistance for needy families, uh, food stamps, Section 8 housing, um, certain types of Medicaid, uh, with exceptions for um, children or um, pregnant or, or recent mothers, but but all of these um, uh, benefits could be uh, then used against a, an attending immigrant or an attending visa applica applicant uh, in factoring whether or not they're they're going to be a public charge. So they could, anyone who has taken these benefits could be uh, deemed a public charge, and then they could be denied for having taken those benefits, uh, which is. Um, a real fear because these benefits oftentimes can be the difference between life and death for certain people. And now the question is, do I take these knowing that it might affect my visa process or my green card in the future? And under the broadened definition of the public charge rule, based on the definitions just described, uh, immigration could look at someone who's uh, applied for and used any of those benefits for more than a 12 month period in the aggregate within the last three years and trigger the public charge rule to deny an application. Other factors that uh, immigration is looking at and considering whether someone is more likely than not to become a public charge are age, education, uh, vocational skill sets, um, uh, family household size, income, debt to income ratio, uh, you know, student loans, mortgages, credit card um, uh, debts, things like that. Um, and all those factors are being now considered a, and could be used to determine whether or not someone is public charge as well. Um, Unfortunately, um, based on a lot of studies and models, the public charge rule is likely going to target and adversely affect visa and green card applicants from certain parts of the world more than others. Um, some estimates have um, immigrants uh, or visa applicants from Mexico and Central America being targeted as much as 70% could be denied under the new public charge standard. Um, in Africa, uh, up in the 60%, in Asia, 50%. Um, some models have as many as um, half of all marriage-based and family-based green card applications now uh, failing under the public charge rule. So this, um, you know, this is early, this just went into effect in February, but it, we could see um, a large uh, a portion of visa and green card applicants um, denied under the public charge rule. So 
Um, with anything, it's new, it's developing. Um, our uh, recommendation is that if you're uh, in applying for a visa, applying for a green card, definitely uh, sit down and talk with an experienced immigration attorney such as myself or somebody else um, and, and that, that can vet the public charge rule and your factors and give you some kind of idea of certainty of whether it's going to affect you or not. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't apply, but definitely go into it with that knowledge prior because um, this is a new rule, it's broad, and it's affecting a lot of cases. So hopefully it doesn't affect yours. If it does, come see me. Um, you can email me at Darius at RoseLawGroup.com or look us up online. Uh, thank you for your time. Take care.